thing, welcome to yoga. Uh, so we've got quite a standy up kind of a practice today. Um, entirely standing practice actually. Um, we're going to ground on the floor, uh, we're going to finish with um, a shavasana but the standing, the, the standing one is all standing. The, um, We've got our sun salutations and then our static postures are all going to be standing today. Um, and we may have a barking dog. So, um, <laughs> um, you'll need your mat or your comfortable flooring, your good self, socks and shoes off. Um, if you're tighter through the hips, you might want to start with a block or a book of some kind to sit upon. Um, and that should be it actually today. Okay, so we're going to start in Bhavakanasana or bound angle pose. If you are tighter through the hips, you might want to do this sitting on a block or any stiff rectangular object. So you'll come seated on it and you'll shuffle forwards until your sit bones, those bony parts of your bottom, are hanging down underneath real life, eh? Uh, hanging down underneath towards the ground and you've just got the fleshy part of your buttocks on the block. You might be fine and comfortable on the floor doing this as well, so find what suits you here. Then you're going to draw the soles of the feet together and take hold of the inside edge of the ankles. We're going to start to flutter the knees in and out. Just a soft, gentle butterfly movement, drawing the soles of the feet together as the knees fold open. And then eventually you're going to hold down at the bottom. So you need to bring the soles of the feet together. You can adjust the feet further away or closer into the hips, whatever feels comfortable for you here. You can shuffle from side to side, rocking the knees, just start to settle down. And from here you're going to roll the shoulders up, back and down. You're going to inhale to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. And on the exhale, let the knees relax towards the ground and allow the eyes to close or the gaze to soften. Then from here we're going to start with a focus on the breath. Take a long, smooth inhale through the nose and an equally long, smooth exhale back out. And again, feel the natural rise and fall of the body with the breath and begin to exaggerate that movement. On the inhale, the belly feels as if it's swelling up like a balloon filling with air. On the exhale, draw the navel towards the spine, feeling that engagement with the muscles in the abdomen. Again, inhaling, feeling all four sides of the torso swell outwards as the lungs fill with air. Exhale to draw the navel towards the spine, Feeling that core engagement, that feeling of your bracing, about to laugh. And I'd like you to stick with that breath as you start to scan through the body from the crown of the head all the way down to the tips of the toes. Just take a moment to check in with how your body's feeling today. Notice any little niggles, aches or pains. Notice also the areas of comfort and ease. Notice the points of contact between your body and the floor beneath you. Through the feet, possibly the hips, possibly if you're particularly flexible through the hips, your knees also may be touching the floor. Take a moment here as well just to notice how much lower your knees feel towards the ground than when we first sat down. Gravity is doing the work here for us. Yoga is beautiful because the amount of time we spend in our postures it just all adds to how strengthened we are, how stretched we are. The longer we stay here, the more relaxed our body becomes, the more open we become through the hips, and the deeper stretch we get. And I'd like to take one last inhale, and on the exhale, allow the eyes to gently open. There's a very mischievous puppy sat right in front of me who, if you didn't have your eyes closed, you will have noticed running in and high-fiving me on the chest halfway through. Um, that's when I sounded like I was about to giggle. <laughs> okay, so from here, we're going to start warming up through the body. 
We're going to start with a Badakonasana cat and cow. So you can either keep your hands just on the fronts of your ankles here, you can bring them a bit higher up through the shins. Then you're going to inhale to draw the belly forwards, pulling the chest and the gaze towards that crease between the wall and the ceiling. And we exhale to round out, drawing the navel to the spine, the spine towards the wall behind you, and then rounding out through the shoulders. Again, inhaling, feeling that stretch through the body at the front as you lift up towards that crease between the wall and the ceiling, and exhaling to round out, feeling that stretch through the back body. And you can move in time with your own breath here. Each inhale, lifting up through the chest, and each exhale, rounding out. We're just starting to warm up through the spine. And one last time in each direction. that off, come to a neutral spine and then you can relax through the legs. You can take your hands off of your ankles, uh, you can bring the feet out wide, you can stay with them together, you can come to a cross-legged position, find what's comfortable for you here, it's fine if you want the legs out long as well, uh, just find what suits you whilst we warm up through the upper half of the body. So you can start by bringing your left hand down to the ground, inhaling to reach your right fingertips to the ceiling and on an exhale trace a wide swooping circle out in front. Inhale to extend and exhale to trace that wide swooping circle. Just starting to warm up through the shoulders, the arms and the upper back and get a bit of a deeper stretch into the lower back. Twice more. And then we repeat on the other side. Right hand comes down, inhale to lift the left hand, and exhale to trace that wide swooping circle. through the spine, you're going to inhale to bring your left hand up to your right thigh, and exhale, swing your right fingertips behind and follow that right shoulder with your gaze. We inhale centre, exhale opposite side. Inhale centre, exhale change sides and again you can move in time with your own breath here. Each inhale coming through centre, each exhale twisting to one side and then the other. <clears throat> Just like to get a bit of rotation through the spine. And once more in each direction. Okay, come back to centre, take the shoulder roll, releasing tension, and then from here we're going to come up to standing. So you can make your own way up, or you can come around to all fours, curl the toes up now, walk the hands in, and walk the hands up the legs, and slowly come up, bringing the head at last. Then we're just going to warm up through the hamstrings, through the joints and the legs. Going to inhale to lift the left knee, exhale to trace those toes in a circle on the floor. An inhale to lift and an exhale to circle. So you don't need to um, be balancing here, you can just, it's like a single march and then the toes stay down whilst you're circling. We're just trying to warm up through the hamstrings, get that forward and backward and that circular motion through the hips, and warm up through the joints, through the legs and ankles.
Okay, but it's your last one before we repeat on the opposite side. And it's exactly the same thing. Inhaling to lift, exhaling to circle. Seems to have quietened down a little bit for a minute, hopefully. And last time. Then from here we're going to come to the front of our mat for our sun salutations. We're going to begin in Tadasana or Mountain Pose with the heels directly under the hips, the shoulders rolling up, back and down. We engage through the legs by drawing the heels and toes together, lifting the kneecaps. We draw the navel towards the spine to engage through the core. We squeeze the shoulder blades in and together opening through the chest and palms face forwards. The chin stays forward as if balanced upon a shelf, inhaling to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling and reaching the fingertips upwards. On the exhale, we rain it down. Take a generous bend in the knees this first time as you come to easy uttanasana or forward fold. We inhale to slide the hands halfway up the shins, coming to a halfway flat back position in a long straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone and the gaze down to the ground. We exhale to release all the way back down to that forward fold, bending the knees generously enough to get the hands flat to the ground. And from here we inhale to step the right and the left foot back, dropping to the knees and coming to a three-quarter plank this first time. So you want the hands under the shoulders, fingers spread wide, actively pushing up and away from the floor, a long straight line from the crown of the head down to the knees. On the next out breath, we keep the elbows tucked in tight to the sides as we slowly lower all the way down to the mat. We inhale to lift the chest and shoulders, keeping a generous bend in the elbows this first time in baby cobra, and we exhale to release. The next inhale, we push back to that three quarter plank position, and exhale to step the right foot to the right hand, coming to a low lunge position framing the foot with the hands. You've got the option to hold here if you want to, or you can take a twist, taking the balance into the left fingertips, inhaling to reach the right fingers towards the ceiling, just as far as it's comfortable to you. We exhale to release that hand to the ground, and we inhale to walk back, straightening the front leg, pulling the toes towards the torso, coming to half splits. We exhale to our low lunge, and inhale to lift the left fingertips this time. You follow those fingers with the gaze. We exhale to release, and inhale to step back to that three-quarter plank position. And you've got the option to hold on the knees here. If you'd like to work harder, you can come into the toes in a long straight line from the crown of the head to the heels. And again, we exhale to slowly lower, shifting the weight forwards if you're on your toes, elbows tight to the sides. From here we inhale to lift the chest and shoulders, either keeping that generous bend in the elbows or straightening out into the full expression of Cobra. We exhale to release. The next inhale pushes us back to the full or three quarter plank. And we exhale to step the left foot to the left hand, dropping the back knee, coming to low lunge on the opposite side. If you're twisting, we inhale to lift the left fingertips and exhale to release. Inhaling to walk back to the half splits, pulling the toes towards the torso, and exhale to low lunge. Inhaling to lift the right fingertips, and exhaling to release. We inhale to step back to your full or your three quarter plank, and from here we exhale to send the hips up, back and down, we find our downward facing dog. You can pedal the feet out here this first time if you want to, releasing tension through the calves and eventually finding stillness with the feet about hip distance apart, the hands about shoulder width and the weights balanced equally between the two. You're going to find a long straight line from the hips to the wrists. If you need to bend the knees to maintain that straight line, that's fine. We inhale to walk the hands in towards the feet. Then we exhale to find our forward fold. Either coming back to that generous bend in the knees 
Or you can keep the legs straight if you'd like a deeper stretch into the hamstrings. We inhale to find the halfway lift. I was sliding the hands halfway up the shins. Or if you can maintain a straight back in that position, you can leave fingertips on the floor. We exhale to release to the forward fold. Then we inhale to send the hands wide as we come all the way to standing. Hands meet overhead in prayer. And slide down the midline to the heart as we come back to the top of the mat for our second round. Again, we inhale to extend. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale to find the halfway lift of your choice. And exhale to fold. We inhale to step back to the full or three quarter plank. Then shifting the weight forwards, we exhale to slowly lower. If you'd like to work harder here, you can add a little hover, an inch or two above the mat, before eventually releasing all the way down. We inhale to lift to the baby or the full cobra and exhale to release. The next inhale pushes us back to the full or three quarter plank. Then we exhale to step the right foot to the right hand. You've got the option to drop the back knee again here, but if you'd like to work hard, you can keep that knee lifted and the leg long and straight. Try and squeeze the inner thighs together to keep balance and stability through the body. If you're twisting, we inhale to lift the right fingertips and exhale to release. Dropping the back knee, we inhale to half splits and exhale to low lunge. Back knee lifted or lowered. We inhale to lift the left fingertips and exhale to release. Next inhale steps us back to whichever version of plank you're working with. Then we exhale to slowly lower. Again, if you want, you can add that little hover, building strength through the triceps and through the core and eventually releasing. Next inhale lift us to baby or full cobra. And exhale to release to the mat. We inhale to push back to our plank. And exhale, step, left foot to left hand. Same leg options here, squeezing the inner thighs if you're staying lifted. Inhaling to lift the left fingertips. Exhaling to release. Dropping the back knee, inhaling to half splits. And exhaling to low lunge. Inhaling to lift the right fingertips. And exhaling to release. We inhale to step back to plank. And we exhale to downward facing dog. We inhale to walk the hands in to meet the feet. And exhale to deepen our forward fold, encouraging the crown of the head towards the air. We inhale to find the halfway lift. And exhale to forward fold. Then one last inhale, centre hands wide as we come all the way to standing. Hands meet overhead in prayer. Slide down the midline to the heart. And today we have a third round. So we need some higher options um, for a chaturanga and an upward facing dog if you'd like to take it. Um, this is going to come back in um, halfway through our standing routine. So you can start with feet hip distance apart. If you want to work harder, feet can be flush together. We inhale to extend, exhale, forward fold. Inhale to find your version of the halfway lift, and exhale to fold. The next inhale, we step or hop back to our plank position. Okay, so this next bit is the change, um, and it's like an extension of that option where you hover at the bottom. So you can just shift the weight forwards and exhale, slowly lower. And again, you can come all the way down to the ground if that's better for you. Or from that hover, you either, from the ground, you'd inhale to your cobra or baby cobra. From the hover, you inhale to roll onto the backs of your feet and lift to an upward facing dog. So you're actually pressing up and away from the mat through the palms of the hands and the feet. And the rest of the body shouldn't be in contact with the mat. You're pulling your chest up and forwards. 
We exhale to roll back to the toes and come back to that chaturanga hover where we're just in contact with the feet and the hands. And we inhale to push back to the plank position. We exhale to step, right foot to right hand to our low lunge. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> okay, and again, the same options, lift it or lowered through the back leg. We're going to inhale to lift the right fingertips and exhale to release. Dropping the back knee, we inhale to half splits. If you'd like to work hard here, a deep stretch, you can fold the knee and the nose together. I said it the wrong way around and tried to make up for it by just listing both things. We fold the nose towards the knee. We exhale to our low lunge and inhale to lift the left fingertips. Exhale to release and inhale to step back to your version of plank. And from here we've got our little flow again. You've still got option to lower down to the ground and to lift up to baby or to full cobra. Otherwise, we're going to exhale to shift the weight forwards and lower to chaturanga. Inhaling to upward facing dog. Exhaling to chaturanga. Inhaling to plank. We exhale to step, left foot to left hand and inhale to lift the left fingertips. We exhale to release. Dropping the back knee, we inhale to half splits. Again, option to fold the nose towards the knee for a deep stretch into the hamstring. Then we inhale. Exhale to low lunge. We inhale to lift the right fingertips. Exhale to release. And inhale to step back to your version of plank. We exhale to downward facing dog. And inhale to walk the hands in, to meet the feet. And deepen that forward fold. We've got an option if you want to take a bind to bring the hands behind the calves or the ankles to encourage the crown of the head lower and the chest closer to the thighs. We inhale to find the halfway lift and exhale to fold. Then one last inhale, send the hands wide as we come all the way to standing. Hands meet overhead in prayer and slide down the midline to the heart. Okay, grab a quick drink if you need it here. We're going to move into our static positions. So as I said before, it's going to be um, standing work. We've got a little um, warrior flow, There's some high lunges, some twists. Um, and again, you might still want that block or that book. Um, there's a pyramid, the one where we're folding forwards with the legs split. You prefer to have your hands on a block there. You might want to keep it handy. Um, otherwise, you'll just need your good self. I'm also going to pop the lights on so that I'm. Uh, there's no much difference, actually, I don't think. Uh, but you can see my shadow as well. Um, so, <laughs> If you haven't noticed, as time's gone on, I've been doing Facebook Live videos as well for York Sport, and it's going to feel a bit more comfortable about standing and chatting to a camera screen whilst I'm doing this, uh, which is <laughs> why I'm a bit more chatty these days than week one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start from the top of the mat. We're going to find the warrior one. So you're going to keep your left foot forward and step your right foot back. It can be one long stride, a few little hops, and you want to step far enough back that you can't get your back heel to the ground. The feet are right hip distance apart, and then you're going to pivot on the back heel, sending the toes out by about 45 degrees, so they're pointing towards that top uh, right hand corner of the mat, and the heel can drop. Hips and torso face over the front edge of the mat. Going to inhale to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. 
and exhale to bend the front knee. We inhale to lift and exhale to lower. Inhale to lift and next time we stay down. Level one with a lighter bend, level two sinking deeper. You're aiming to try and get that thigh parallel to the floor. Really concentrate on pulling those hips forwards so that your hips and torso are facing over your front foot. The hands can stay on the hips. We can inhale to bring them up above the head with the palms facing in together with the wrists directly above the shoulders. The gaze stays forward and the chin parallel to the ground. Each inhale, think about lifting, lengthening from the fingertips or the crown of the head down through the bottom of the spine to the back heel. Each exhale, try to sink a little lower and squeeze the inner thighs together to feel that grounding sensation through the legs, that centering of your energy, that stability in your posture. You keep pulling the navel towards the spine, you're trying to keep the shoulders stacked over the hips here as well. Keeping that long straight spine. And from here we're going to come to a reverse warrior. You can always hold here if you don't like bending through the back. Otherwise you're going to release your right hand to the back edge of your right thigh. And inhale to reach the left fingertips up and over as you slide the right hand down the thigh. And you can stop where it's comfortable for you here. It could be really near the top. And you're just pulling up fingers, the left fingers slightly back above the shoulder. If you're quite strong through the back, you might want to come further down. Then you're going to keep your gaze through the underside of your elbow. You're trying to maintain that length through the spine. And we inhale, slide back up, return to our warrior one, three breaths. And on your next exhale, release the hands, inhale, straighten the legs. We're going to come to a pyramid next. Um, You've always got the option to keep that front knee bent if you need to, but you get a much better stretch into the back of the thigh and keep the legs straight. You need to inhale to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. Exhale, hands to front thigh. You start to fall forwards. You're going to stop just above the knee and you're going to hold here for a minute with a long straight spine. We're just starting to let the hamstrings get a little bit more used to the pose. Start to relax a little. And then you have three options. You can either hold here in the halfway lift with that long straight spine, or you can start to slide the hands further down. You can come to the shin, you can come to the foot. If you have that block handy, you can always bring your hands to that block, just to the inside edge of the right foot, of the left foot. Or you can bring your hands to the ground if you are quite flexible through the hamstring, through the lower back. If you are quite flexible and you're really comfortable here, you can always start to walk the hands backwards as well, encouraging your torso to come closer to the thigh. Each inhale, you're trying to find length from the crown of the head to the tailbone, from your hip to your heel on the back leg. You're trying to pull your left hip up towards the ceiling. And as soon as you do that, you feel that stretch increase through the back of the thigh. Okay, take one last breath. Then if the hands have walked back you, so you bring them back to the foot and we inhale to slowly roll all the way back up, standing. And from here you're going to pivot, lift the back heel, pivot the toes so everything's facing towards the front. 
and we exhale to bend that front knee again. And to try and keep that back leg long and straight as we come to a high lunge position. We've got the option to hold here. You can bring the hands to prayer at the heart, or there's a further option to twist. If you want to take the twist, you're going to inhale to reach your left fingertips around towards the back edge of the mat. You can follow your left hand with your gaze, you can keep it through the right hand or anywhere in between. And to try and keep your hands as high as the shoulders. And you're going to try and keep pulling those left fingertips towards the back edge of the mat. You're trying to squeeze the inner thighs together to keep that stability and grounding through the legs. Your core stays engaged and your shoulders stay above the hips. One last breath. And we inhale, center, and exhale, straighten the leg. From here, we're going to come to a warrior three, our balance position. Uh, I don't have much space, I'm going to have to come back a little bit. Uh, you might be able to just stay where you are. And from here, you're going to take your balance into your left foot. And you're going to hop in a little bit with your right foot until you can straighten through that left leg and keep your balance, balance equally over all four corners of the left foot. So we're coming to a warrior three. Option one, just stay here with toes on the mat. Option two, the torso tilts slightly forwards as you start to lift the heel. You can stay as low as is comfortable for you here. And you can always take hold of a wall in front of you if you need to. Option three, going to tilt the torso forwards and lift that back heel. And your aim is to try and come parallel to the ceiling or to the floor. And you're going to flex the right foot and point the toes down towards the mat. This helps to square through the hips. Hands can stay on the hips, they can extend back like wings, or they can reach forwards with the palms facing in together. Each inhale, you're looking for length from the fingertips or the crown of the head through to the back heel. Each exhale, you're trying to lift the left inner thigh, the right inner thigh a little closer to the ceiling. Take one last breath. And exhale to release. Then from here, we're going to roll forwards. You can take a generous bend in the knees if you need to. Or you can keep the legs straight. We're going to inhale to find that halfway lift. And exhale to release. We're going to inhale to walk the hands forwards. Possibly the feet backwards, depending on your stance. You need to find your plank. This will be a full plank or a knee plank. We're going to go through that flow once again. So we're going to exhale, keeping the elbows tight to the side, shifting the weight forward to be on your toes, and slowly lowering down, either all the way to the floor or to Chaturanga. Inhaling to full or baby cobra, or to upward facing dog. Exhaling to Chaturanga. Inhaling to plank. And from here we exhale, the down facing dog. Then just take a few seconds here, just a rest your pose. If you need a more rest your pose, you can always lower the knees. You can come to a child's pose for a few breaths. And we can take a few seconds just to recover through the body. This is quite uh, strenuous today. <laughs> Take one last breath. Then if you come to child's pose, you're going to lift through the hips. Send them up, back and down, and return to a downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, everybody inhales to walk the hands in to meet the feet. And exhales to slowly 
roll back up to standing. And then we're going to repeat on the opposite side. Grab a quick drink again if you need it here. Perfect opportunity. I'm going to come back to that warrior one. And this time, you're going to keep your right foot forward and step your left foot back. Lost track of what foot I was doing then. Again, a few little hops or one long stride. Stepping so far back that the heel can't touch the ground. Then dropping that back heel as you pivot the toes in by about 45 degrees. Hips and torso facing over the front edge of the mat. Inhale to extend, exhale to bend the front knee. We inhale to lift, exhale to lower. And next time, we stay down. Again, level one with a lighter bend. Level two, sinking deeper. Squeezing the inner thighs together. Hips and torso facing over the front knee. Hands can stay on the hips, or you can inhale to reach the hands up above the shoulders, palms facing in. This is Virabhadrasana 1 or Warrior 1. Again, each inhale, thinking about length from the back heel, through to the tailbone, through to the crown of the head or to the fingertips. Each exhale, trying to sink a little deeper, squeeze the inner thighs together. I'm trying to squeeze the shoulders together, and back and down, pulling the shoulders away from the ears. I'm trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together as if you're holding a piece of juicy fruit between the shoulder blades. Here you're strengthening through the calf, the thigh, the glute, through the core and through the shoulders. You're stretching out through the inner thigh, through the hip flexor, opening through the hips and through the heart space. <clears throat> and again, we're going to come back to that reverse warrior. Releasing left hand to the back edge of the left thigh, and again, option one, you can just tilt slightly upwards and pull those fingers slightly back further than the shoulder. If you want more, you can slide down, you can stop on the thigh or the calf, just coming as far as is comfortable for you. Gaze stays up through the under edge of the elbow, and again, each inhale you're looking for length through the spine, each exhale trying to sink that knee a little deeper to lift the heart a little higher. So here you've got the same leg benefits, glute benefits, the core strengthening is higher, you're also strengthening through the back, so getting a deep stretch into the heart space. And it's harder, isn't it, let's be honest. One last breath, and we inhale slide back up and return to our warrior one. Put three breaths here. My side is burning, I don't know about yours. And straighten that front leg, release the arms, we come back to our pyramid. So again, you're going to inhale to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. Hands come to the front of the thigh. We exhale to slide down, stopping just above the knee with that long straight spine. Again, we're just waiting for that hamstring to release a little, pull a little further into the pose. It's quite an intense stretch into the hamstring, this one. Again, you might want that block handy by the inner edge of your right foot. And then, options again, you can stay here in this halfway position. Or you can start to slide down further. You can hold on the thigh, the shin, you can come to the foot, to the block, you can bring the hands to frame the foot, or you can start to walk the heels of the hands backwards, encouraging the torso closer to the thigh. And again, if you're really struggling, there's always that option to bend through that front leg, but you will get a much better stretch if you keep it straight. Each inhale, trying to lift your right hip towards the ceiling. Each exhale, trying to lower your torso towards the thigh. So here you're still strengthening through the legs, but you're also getting a really deep stretch into the back of the thigh. 
Just stretching into the glutes and into the lower back. And you're boosting circulation to the upper half of the body if you have your head below your heart. I've got leg shake, I always get leg shake in this one. Take one last breath. Walk the hands back towards the foot if you've slid them backwards. And we inhale, slowly slide the hands back up the leg as we come back to standing. And lift the back heel, pivot on the toes so that you've got both toes pointing towards the front edge of the mat. Inhale, to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling and exhale to bend the front knee. Come to high lunge on the opposite side. So again, you're keeping the shoulders over the hips on a long straight spine. You can hold here with the hands on the hips. You can bring the hands to prayer at the heart with active elbows, pressing the palms together, elbows out in line with the wrists. Or you have that further option to take the twist. Inhaling to reach the left fingertips out towards the back edge of the mat. Following out of the left, uh, sorry, it's the right fingertips, reaching the right fingertips towards the back edge of the mat. And you can follow your gaze through your right fingertips or through your left or anywhere in between. And again, you're trying to squeeze the inner thighs together to help with that balance and that stability. You're trying to push the back heel towards the bottom of the mat. You're trying to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling every inhale. Sink a little lower on each exhale. You're trying to reach those fingertips a little further to deepen through the twist. So here again, you're strengthening through the calf, the thigh, the glute, through the core and through the shoulders. You're opening through the heart space, getting a stretch into the hip flexor. And twisting is really good for your spinal health as well. We inhale, center, and exhale, straighten up. And again, we can come back to that warrior three balance position. You need to adjust your stance. I do here. No space. And you get to take your balance onto your right foot this time. Again, option one, you can stay with the toes of the left foot down, the hands on the hips. But you can lift that back foot as you tilt the torso forwards. It comes just a light balance, so you're hovering just above the ground. If you're a bit more uncomfortable with balance work, it's a really nice option. Option three, tilting forwards and trying to find that long straight line parallel to the floor and ceiling. Flexing the foot and pointing the toes down. Hands stay on hips, come out like bird wings, or extend out forwards. And again, you've got that option to be holding onto a wall if you need to. I kind of have no choice here because the wall's in front of me. <laughs> so each inhale, you're looking for length from the fingertips or the crown of the head through to the back heel. Each exhale, trying to lift the inner thigh of the left leg towards the ceiling. To help with your balance, you can engage the core drawing the navel towards the spine and find a fixed spot on the ground to stare at. Take one last breath. And exhale to release. Then from here, I'm going to come back to the front of the mat. Feet flush together or hip distance apart. Generous bend of the knees or straight leg. We fold forwards on an exhale. And we're just going to hold for a few beats here. And then to inhale to find your version of the halfway lift. And exhale to deepen that forward fold. So again, you can, you can always have that block here if you need to, to have your hands on that. You can have your hands on the ground, you can be clasping them with your elbows. You've got that option to take a bind, bring the hands behind the calves. Or as well, you can always slide the palms of the hands underneath the feet 
Give yourself a little massage into the wrists with your toes. Each inhale, trying to lift the hips towards the ceiling. Each exhale, trying to draw the crown of the head towards the feet and your chest towards your thighs. Okay, we've taken a bind here, release your hands and then bend your knees as generously as you need to to get the hands flat to the ground and we inhale to step the left and the right foot back I'm going to come to a child's pose. Toes together, knees as wide as the mat, send the hips back and down and reach the arms forwards in line with the shoulders. You can rest your forehead on the mat and breathe deeply here. You can keep the arms extended. If you'd like a more restive pose, you can swim the hands around so they're next to the shins with the palms facing towards the ceiling. Or if you'd like a stretch into the triceps and the backs of the arms, you can keep the arms forwards, bring the palms together, and then draw the heels of the hands towards the back of the head and the nape of the neck and make yourself a little sharp in here. If you want to deepen that stretch, you can walk the elbows slightly forwards, then draw the fingertips slightly backwards. Okay, release the hands back above the head. And we're going to inhale to walk the hands in and walk up to a seated position. And when we're going to finish with um, legs at the wall. Lovely, lovely uh, move. So you will need a wall of some description for this and um, your mat close up to it. So I'm going to demonstrate this against my radiator wall, which isn't quite ideal, but you will get a better view of what I'm doing. So you're going to shuffle your hips as close up to that wall as you can. And then you're going to line your back and walk your feet upwards. Then you can shuffle the body forwards and try and get the hips just as close up to that wall as you can. And then flatten the legs against the wall. And you stay here with the legs long, you can let the hips open and the feet fall out to the sides so if that's more comfortable to you. You can make yourself a little cushion, interlace the fingers and bring the hands behind the bed, behind your bed, obviously I'm, you know, really relaxed here, behind the head to make yourself a little cushion. You can even use the thumbs to give yourself a little neck up here as well, if you feel like you would like it. This is really nice, it's just really boosting the circulation of the upper half of the body, letting the blood flow come away from the feet and from the legs, which is really nice after so much standing work today. I feel like we've worked our legs quite hard, we've worked our glutes quite hard, and this is a real nice chance for them to reset. Take three more breaths here. With each breath, try to allow the body to relax a little further.
And one last exhale. And you're going to inhale to bring the legs together, draw the knees towards the chest and roll over onto your right hand side. And from here we're going to prepare for Shavasana, our relaxation pose. So grab any blankets or pillows or anything that you might need to become more comfortable. Feel free if you're on something, a device that moves, just to hop into bed, why not? Um, otherwise you can always bring yourself a block or even a handy rolled up yoga mat uh, as a little pillow. You can grab yourself a little blanket and we get to come to our Shavasana. Then we've got an option today to do this also in reclined um, Bhadakanasana, which is the same position we started in but reclined instead of seated, um, getting that further opening through the hips. So that's always an option if you want to stretch out through the inner thighs at the same time as you're having your relaxation. When you're ready, you're going to roll down. Either bring your head to a pillow, block, or to rest on the ground. Your legs come out long towards the bottom corners of the mat, letting the feet fall naturally out to the sides. Arms come out long by the sides with the palms to the ceiling. The shoulders roll up, back and down, sliding the shoulders down the spine before replacing them on the ground with a lovely open heart space. The pelvis tilts slightly upwards and the chin tilts ever so slightly downwards to give you length from the crown of the head to the tailbone. And again, there's that option if you have lower back issues to have the knees bent, the feet as wide as the mat and allow the knees to fold in together and rest upon each other. Just give you a little bit of extra space through the lower back. Or you have that further option to walk the feet in together and bring the soles of the feet together as you allow the knees to fold open and come to that reclined Baddhakanasana. And again, you can adjust here if you want the feet further away or closer in towards the hips. Just find whatever's comfortable for you. Shuffle around a bit, make any adjustments that you need to to become entirely comfortable. If you have a handy blanket, cover yourself over with it. If you have a handy other person living in the house, ask them to come be with it. People should be nice to each other. And then, whenever you're ready, whenever you become entirely comfortable, you can allow your eyes to gently close. And from here, I'd like you to draw your focus back to your breath. Take a long, smooth inhale through the nose. And an equally long, smooth exhale back out. Inhale. And exhale. Feeling the belly and chest rise as the lungs fill with air on your in-breath. Letting all tension and stress leave the body on your out-breath. Then allowing your body to fall into a natural tidal breath. I'd like you to start noticing the sensations within the body. Scanning down from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. Noting any areas of comfort or discomfort, any points of tension. Not trying to change anything, just noticing these areas before moving on. Now, I would like you to start to relax through the body. Starting from the top of your head, feeling the scalp ease, and then the muscles in the face release and relax. Feel the muscles in your neck and shoulders relax, and all tension just melt away. Feelings of relaxation 
flow down the arms, through the elbows and the wrists, all the way to the tips of your fingers. Drawing your attention to the upper back and chest, feel this area relax and soften, sinking into the mat below. The relaxing sensation continues down through the belly, all of the muscles softening and releasing before moving down to the hip and pelvic area where the relaxing feeling lets the hips feel as if they are gently opening and releasing. Now feel all tension release from the gluteals and thighs. These strong muscles Soften and release. The relaxing feeling moves down, releasing through the calves, moving down through the ankles and then the feet. Feeling any remaining tension from anywhere in the body, release through the tips of your toes. Pulling your awareness back to the body as a whole. Feel the entire body relaxed, peaceful and calm as it melts down into the mat below. And I'd like you to gradually begin to draw your awareness back to your surroundings. Start to notice the sounds around you, the sensation of air on your skin. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, waking up through the body as you turn your attention inwards and take note of how you're feeling. You can move or stretch in any way that feels comfortable or good to you. Eventually, drawing one knee and then the other in towards the chest and giving yourself a big hug. From here, we're going to roll over onto the right hand side where when you're ready, you can allow the eyes to softly open. From here, we use the left hand to push ourselves back up to a comfortable seated position where our practice for today concludes. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me. Um, feel free to leave any comments that you want or to get in touch uh, because you all know my details. Um, and um, yes, there should be um, another opposite kind of a practice coming soon um where we're going to focus on doing everything from seated uh, and floor work which should be more relaxing if that's something that you're after at the moment so thank you all for joining me um and i'll see you next time thank you bye